Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and welcome to your episode of Sunday Mailbox. This is a video series where you, the viewer, can submit your gaming related questions, and then I will give my humble opinion on them. To get the format is out of the way real quick, if you would like to submit your own question that can be featured in an upcoming episode, you can do so by leaving a comment down below, or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. The first question for today is, do you think that the end of Siege is coming? With Black Ops 4 coming out, a lot of people switch to it, or when the game Ready or Not releases, it will kill Siege with its ultra realism. I am not worried about that whatsoever. Yes, when Black Ops or the new Battlefield releases, there is going to be a lot of people that will put down Siege for a while to try out the new video game. But that's true for any new video game. Gamers don't just play one game forever. I mean, some, yes, because of financial reasons. They can only play maybe one game every couple of months or something along those lines. Uh, but eventually, people pick up other video games, and that's okay. Yes, when Black Ops 4 comes out, people are going to switch on over and play that for a while. Some may even never return to Siege, but that's not going to be the end of the world for that game. On top of that, Call of Duty and Battlefield have very different gameplay experiences compared to Rainbow Six Siege. They're practically a different genre at this point in the FPS genre. Yes, they do share some similarities here and there, but you're going to have a hard time arguing to me that someone who's picking up the new Call of Duty is looking for the same experience like you would get with Rainbow Six Siege. Now, some people might argue, well, wait a second, if that's the case, then ready or not could be something that Ubisoft needs to worry about. Ready or not is going to be a much more tactical, realistic siege. It's going to be much more gritty. And while, yeah, the game looks interesting, it is an indie game at the end of the day. I have a hard time believing that an indie game is all of a sudden going to completely blow everyone out of the water and overthrow a game that has the full backing of Ubisoft. It's possible, but I highly, highly doubt it. Honestly, the only way that I could see Rainbow Six Siege declining quickly is if we have a lot of terrible DLC and seasons back to back. Let's be honest, last season was a bit rough around the edges. I know it's up for the debate, but I think a lot of people were disappointed by Finca and Lion. We didn't have any new maps, and while the zombie mode was fun, it didn't last very long. It didn't bring us a lot of long-lasting content. I think most people would agree that last season was one of the weakest. I also know a lot of people stopped playing Siege because of those two new operators. If we had an Operation Chimera back to back to back to back, where it was just a misstep after misstep. It seemed like Ubisoft really didn't know what direction they wanted to take with the game. All of a sudden, they just started adding an overpowered operator after overpowered operator. Then yeah, I could absolutely see the decline of Rainbow Six Siege. But Operation Parabellum has given me faith that they do know what they're doing, because this season so far has been fantastic. Not only do we have the new map, but we've gotten a rework of the old map, Clubhouse. They vastly improved it and made it much more competitive for multiple objectives. And also, of course, we've got two new operators that seem to be relatively well balanced and actually require a fair amount of skill and finesse to use properly. And so all in all, I'm not really worried about this whatsoever. If we look over at the Steam charts, Rainbow Six Siege has had the most consecutive players ever in its history this last week. I know it, the DLC just released, but it's got more people playing now than ever. It's been a constant increase in the player base and to all of a sudden assume that in a couple of months it's going to just drop down to nothing, I think would be very, very surprising. The next question is, are you disappointed that Battlefield 5 is going to have Battle Royale? No, not at all. But looking through comments online, it seems like this is the worst decision that DICE could have ever made, and it has no business being in the Battlefield franchise. What I find really interesting about this discussion is at the end of the day, this is just a game mode. It's a different way to play your favorite FPS in a slightly different way. Where was the criticism back in Battlefield 1 for War Pigeons? A lot of people are making the argument right now that DICE should not be spending development time on this mode because it attracts from all of the other things that they could be adding into the game. Well, the question I have then is, where was all this criticism back when DICE announced War Pigeons in Battlefield 1? They had to have development time, resources, and tools spent to create that mode. They had to sit down, hash out how it was all going to play out. Where was all of this criticism back when they announced that game mode? I think what it really just comes down to is that Battlefield was not the original creator of Battle Royale. 
People put a lot of stock in originality. If you're not the first person to do something, even if you do it significantly better, you're just a copycat. I feel like that's exactly what's happening with Battlefield right now. I truly do think that as long as DICE does this properly, it's gonna blow Player Unknown Battlegrounds out of the water. With the amount of destruction, with the triple A polish that's known for the Battlefield franchise, all the smooth animations, much better hit registration, net code, and everything along those lines, Yes, Battlefield may not be the first one to do it, but why are we putting so much stock into originality when I really do think that it's going to be a much better experience compared to the other options out there? At the end of the day, it's all about just having fun. If it does it well and it's an enjoyable experience, why does it matter? Now, one argument that I do think holds water is the idea that if this game mode takes off and it becomes incredibly popular, DICE is going to focus all of their attention on this mode and not create any content or update the other aspects of their game. People, when they buy Battlefield, are looking for conquests, they're looking for new weapons, they're looking for new experiences along those lines, and not just to play Battle Royale. And so if DICE sees the crazy success of this new mode, they might focus all of their attention on that and completely ignore all other aspects of their game. Now that is an argument that I think is worthwhile, but of course we're only going to have to wait and see what happens after that. And so all in all, I'm not disappointed by this news really whatsoever. Yes, I do have a couple of concerns here and there, but as long as DICE creates something fun and satisfying, this is just going to be another way to experience the game in a slightly different way, and I don't really think that's going to be the worst thing ever. But of course, that is just my two cents. The next question comes from Brandon, and it is, what about a buff to Capkin where he places traps on the top of a doorway? I feel like Capkin is not used to his full potential. Also, this buff would make people use Thatcher more. I don't know if I'm on board with that idea. Yes, Capkin may not be getting takedowns left, right, and center with his gadget, but honestly, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Capkin's entire design is to slow down the progress of the offensive team, and if they are rushing, or they're not taking it at least somewhat cautiously, uh, they're going to be taking some damage. He's not meant to take out the entire offensive team, or whittle them down all to zero, before they hit the objective. When I'm playing as Capkin, usually every round, his gadget goes off once or twice. When I get into an engagement with that player now, they're at a significant disadvantage. If they're at 50 HP or we can get two of their teammates down to around 40 to 50 HP that's going to swing things into our favor. Yes the one shot headshot mechanic kind of equalizes things a bit but even still having to hit someone in the body compared for a headshot th that's going to give you a much larger advantage in those situations. At the end of the day I think that Capkin is not designed to completely destroy everyone on the offensive team but he's meant to slow down their progress and force them to drone. You may have only been able to do a little bit of damage with your gadget, but mission accomplished. They're now going to have to take it much more cautiously because they know the ca uh, Capkin is on the defensive team. As soon as we place his trap on the top of a doorway, I don't know about you, and maybe this is the biggest reason why I don't like the idea, but that just sounds like a nightmare. We already have to check for traps every single part of the map. There's Lesion, there's Ella's, we have Frost Traps, we have Capkin Traps. Now we have to look at the top of the, the doorways and the windows as well to know if it's safe. I feel like that's just taking it to the extreme. Overall, I feel like Capkin is in a decent place right now. I think Ubisoft did a good job of walking that fine line where he's not useless like he was a long time ago, but he's also not just this overpowered, annoying operator where you're having to check every single doorway because you're afraid it's going to one-shot you. I feel like as soon as they put this on top of a doorway, well, I think people would overcome that. They, they would figure it out. It would just make the game a little bit more frustrating to fight against Capkin, and I just don't think that's needed, especially because I do think he's in a decent spot. The next question comes from Jacob, and it is, what do you think about a system where you can choose which player you want to watch in a pro match? For example, if you are a Valkyrie main and want to see how they play her. If Ubisoft was able to pull that off, I truly think that would be a game changer for the Pro League. If I was able to log on in, click on the Pro League tab, it brought me into the game and then I could view anyone's perspective or even free camera it, that would be incredible. One of the biggest issues I've always had with the Pro League is that it's very difficult as a spectator to get involved because usually I have no idea what's happening at any given moment. And while it's gotten a lot, a lot better over the years, 
Even still, someone who's put a lot of time into this game, because the camera is just bouncing around all over the place, and I personally have no control over that camera, I don't know who it's bouncing to, who I'm now watching, and what I should be looking out for. Now, realistically, I don't even know if this is technically possible. I don't know if their engine, I don't know if they have the framework to even allow people to spectate the game on that large of a scale. If you had 100,000 people watching a match and, it, and also gave them the ability to free cam around or switch between perspectives, is that even something possible with that engine? I have no idea. But if it is and they were able to pull it off, I really think that that would take things to the next level. Uh, but yeah guys, that is about it for today's episode of Sunday Mailbox. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you thought about what we discussed in today's video. Are you excited for Battle Royale in Battle of Five? Are you disappointed about that news? Give me your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. As always, if you'd like to submit your own question for an upcoming episode, you can also leave a comment or by sending me a Facebook or Twitter message. But until tomorrow guys, have a good one and take it easy.